Well, a very warm welcome to this online carol service. The service has been put together by members of the church community and the wider community of Wollaston, Eastern Mordet, Bowdoin, and Strixton, and uh, those further afield. The format of the service will follow our usual annual carol service, so we'll hear carols followed by readings, and we'll also have a Christmas message towards the end of the service by uh, someone called J. John, who's a, a, a national speaker. So do enjoy this service, and I really hope that as you listen once again to this Christmas story, that it will speak fresh to you. Enjoy. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The snake deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the snake, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. 
and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will bite his heel. walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. For us to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and of understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But that with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured, the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month. For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, 
Mary answered, May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. days a decree was issued by the Emperor Augustus for a registration to be made throughout the Roman world. For this purpose everyone made his way to his own town and so Joseph went up to Judea from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to register at the city of David called Bethlehem because he was of the house of David by descent and with him went Mary who was betrothed to him. She was expecting a child while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in his swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them to lodge in the house.
the shepherds and the angels. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David a Saviour has been born to you, he is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you, you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men, on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light, he came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. I 
close my eyes see the night when love was born perfect child gently We might not be having the perfect Christmas, but remember the first Christmas wasn't perfect. It was miraculous, but messy. The truth that Jesus came to earth is the proof that God cares. The story of Christmas is the story of God's relentless love for us. Jesus did not come to make God's love possible but to make God's love visible. Christmas is the time and place where God pulls back the curtain so we can see his face. Christmas is the answer to our questions. Where is God? Who is God? God couldn't have made himself bigger to impress us, so he made himself smaller to attract us. Christmas means God with us. The Christmas message is that there is hope. The only true historical reason for celebrating Christmas is as the birthday of Jesus Christ but nobody celebrates the birthday of a dead person. It is because Jesus is alive that there can be a true celebration of his birthday. One of the things I really like about this season are school nativity plays. And there was one infant school where there was one boy who was 
desperate to play the part of Joseph. And the day arrived when the teacher announced all the starring roles, but he wasn't chosen to play Joseph. And he was very, very upset. But he did get the part of the innkeeper, but he didn't want to be the innkeeper. Anyhow, the day arrived when the school presented their annual Christmas production to the entire school, all the families and all the friends. And then you get to that point where Mary and Joseph arrive at the innkeeper's door and they knock on the door. The door opens, the innkeeper comes to the door. Joseph says, can my wife Mary and I, can we come in for the evening? And the innkeeper said, she can come in, but you can't. I wanted to be Joseph. There are many different versions of Christmas. And because there are many different versions of Christmas, it is good for us every Christmas time to stop and to go back to the original script. Sir David Suchet will now read from the original script. Hello, I'm David Suchet, and I'm absolutely delighted to be reading this wonderful passage of scripture for this Christmas service. The particular passage is taken from Matthew 2, verses 1 to 11, and you'll all know it. It's the story of the wise men. But I want you to listen to it as though you've never heard it before, because there's so much in it, and see what we can rediscover together. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In the original script, which David Suchet read for us, we heard there of a group of people known as the wise men. Now, I do have to confess as a man that those two words, wise men, don't always go together. I wonder what would have happened if they were wise women. Well, I think if they were wise women, they would have asked for directions and arrived there on time. They probably would have brought a casserole. They would have cleaned out the stable. 
they would have helped with the delivery and they would have brought far more practical presents. But the original script says the wise men came, bowed down and gave Jesus gifts. And they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. Now, why? Why gold? Why frankincense? Why myrrh? Well, it's symbolism. And the symbolism behind the gifts is very profound. Gold in the Bible is a symbol of kingship. So by giving gold, you are acknowledging their kingship. By bowing down and worshipping them, you're saying, I want to come under your reign and rule. Frankincense in the Bible is a symbol for prayer. It's a symbol of communication. And they had understood that God had come to the earth to communicate with people. And by giving frankincense, they're saying, we want to communicate with you. Myrrh in the Bible is a symbol of burial. It's a symbol of death. And they had understood that the king had come to the earth to do something for us. What's gone wrong? That is a very important and good question to ask. What's gone wrong? What went wrong? The heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. Unless we understand the truth of that, we will never understand the solution. I think one of the easiest ways of understanding what's gone wrong is to think of your life and think, what would it be like if it was all projected onto a huge screen? Everything we ever thought, everything we ever said, everything we've ever done. How would you feel if you saw the film of your life in detail. I wouldn't want to see the film of my life because I don't need convincing that I've thought, that I've said, that I've done things that I shouldn't have. The reality is this, all of us, we are all on the naughty list. When we go back to the original script, the word for that is sin. Every time we disobey God, every time we break God's commandments, God's principles, God's values, that's called sin. And it disconnects us from God. And it works a little bit like an overdraft in a bank account. If you've got an overdraft and I've got an overdraft, you can't help me and I can't help you. The only one who can help us is someone in credit. Jesus was the only one in credit. If our greatest need was information, then God would have sent us an educator. If our greatest need was money, then God would have sent us an economist. If our greatest need was technology, then God would have sent us a scientist. If our greatest need was pleasure, then God would have sent us an entertainer. But our greatest need was forgiveness. That's why God sent us a savior. I remember many years ago when my son Michael was about four years of age, he and I went to buy a present for his mum, my wife Killy, for Mother's Day. And we walked into this store and as we walked into the store, I saw this huge sign that said, do not touch. 
all breakages must be purchased. I mean, I don't know why I didn't just walk out, but we kept looking around. And before you knew it, both of us, Michael and myself, began touching things. But then I saw it from the corner of my eyes. He knocked something over and I tried to reach out. It felt like slow motion, but whatever it was that he touched fell to the ground whoosh, and smashed. The manager stood there beside us within seconds and pointed to the sign, do not touch or breakages must be purchased. And I said, well, I didn't do it. He did it. And I thought, I'll leave Michael in the store to sort it out. I can leave. But there was no way Michael could pay for what was broken. Only his daddy could pay for it. In a similar way, you and I have broken God's commandments, have broken God's values, have broken God's principles, and we can't pay for it. That's why Jesus paid for it. You see, the wise men understood that, and that's why they gave myrrh. Jesus, you've come to die, because by dying on a cross, it was as if he was cashing a check signed with his own blood to say, here is the check to clear your overdraft. Jesus Christ purchased for us forgiveness. The Bible puts it this way in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. I like the way that Charles Wesley in 1739 expressed it in one of his carols. Hark, the herald, angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. The whole Christmas story is a story of reconciliation, of God coming to earth, to reconcile us to himself. One Christmas, I was given a gift certificate from a very prestigious store in London. There was an expiry date and I left it on my desk. And then within days and weeks, it got covered up. And one day, while I was clearing my desk, I found it. But the date had expired. I rang them, I appealed, I begged, and they said, no, it's past. It's past it's too late. Every single one of us is being offered a gift this Christmas. That gift is Jesus. At Christmas time, when we receive gifts, we don't really need. God offers us a gift we can't do without. The Bible says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The gift of Christmas is Christ. 
And when we receive Christ, we receive a savior. We receive strength. We receive serenity and we receive security. I sometimes see it a bit like those babuska dolls that when you receive the doll, but inside there's another one and there's another one and there's another one. And in a similar way, that's what we experience when we receive Christ. God never offers us a gift we are not capable of receiving. And I received the gift of Christ on the 9th of February, 1975. And I have been profoundly changed by knowing Jesus. Philip Brooks wrote a beautiful carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And in the final verse of that carol, he wrote these words, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us. Abide with us. Our Lord, Emmanuel. I think those words, that prayer, are just beautiful. And they, that prayer sums up what our response should be to Christmas. The wise men understood it. Jesus is King of Kings, who's come to communicate with us and came into the world, not just at the cradle, but went to the cross to purchase for you and I forgiveness so that we could all experience forgiveness from the past, new life here today, and a hope for the future. The gift of Christmas is Christ. Have you received Christ? If you haven't, why don't you receive Christ today? Receive Christ now. Now, maybe you did but then you got diverted, distracted, maybe even found yourself derailed. Well, why don't you receive Christ afresh today? And in a moment, I'm going to pray those words from Phillips Brooks, beautiful, O little town of Bethlehem. And as I pray these words, why don't you pray those words and make this a reality for you today. As I pray the words, if you would like to receive Christ or reaffirm your faith, join with me and pray these words as I personalize them. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend on me, I pray. Cast out my sin and enter in. Be born in me today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to me, abide with me. My Lord, Emmanuel. Amen. I pray for every one of you that have prayed that prayer now, either for the first time or a way as reaffirming your faith. I pray that you will experience Christ's forgiveness and be set free from the past. I pray that you will experience his presence by his Holy Spirit. I pray that you will experience his peace 
I pray that you will experience his well-being in your life. And I pray that you will experience his protection. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I do hope you've been inspired. I hope you've been encouraged. And I want to pray a Christmas prayer over you and for you. May God grant you the light of Christmas, which is faith, the warmth of Christmas, which is love, the radiance of Christmas, which is purity, the righteousness of Christmas, which is justice, the belief in Christmas, which is truth, the all of Christmas, which is Christ. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, may God grant you all these things, not just at Christmas, but throughout the new year and all the years to come. Merry Christmas to you all. enjoyed this carol service. If you'd like to know more about Christianity or about what this Christmas story really means for us today, then as a church we're running an online alpha course and the details of that will come up at the end of the service. We'd love to have you join us for that. And so I do pray that this Christmas time you'll know something of the Lord's peace and his joy. God bless. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy
happy new year. Good tidings we bring to you and your King. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.